Hi, this will be a continuation of the last video where we talk about JavaScript and uh, loading our data and putting it on the page. So in the last video, we loaded some data and we you know, printed some simple stuff to the page there. Let's improve our system here and make it something that really works well and is less work for us. Um, if you followed the last example, you'll see that we we made this string here and it was a little difficult here because we you know we had to write one string and then use the plus sign to connect it with a variable and then attach another string here and you know we could continue with this with all the the little bits of information that are that's in our data um, you know our data objects here but it might get pretty ugly you know actually this should be a challenge. You should stop yourself and you should imagine the HTML that you want to create here. Imagine you got a div, it's got a, an H1, it's got a paragraph, it's got some other stuff, maybe a link, and you're grabbing all the data from this file and you're taking each one of these properties and applying them to something, okay? Go ahead, stop the video and do that right now so you realize like how difficult and convoluted this string right here could become with a bunch of nested variables. Um, we're going to improve on that with what's called templates, okay? And there are several JavaScript templating engines out there. Um, I'm going to just use one of them. You know, once you get this one figured out, you can figure out any of the other ones on your own. Um, and so I'm going to set that up in this video, okay? So what we're going to do, instead of writing strings like this, we're going to create a template, and we're actually just going to pass an object into the template, and then the template will take the properties of the object and kind of insert them into the template where they belong, okay? And it'll be a lot less work for us, okay? So how are we going to do this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use a template, a JavaScript template called Handlebars. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go search up Handlebars JS right now. And there you go. You can see it says Handlebars JS minimum templating on steroids. Um, and we're going to go get this one. So I'll go over the examples here. Their examples kind of explain how this works. I'll, I'll just do them in our example, but you can also read this um, for review. The first thing we need to do, though, is we need to download handlebars. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can link to handlebars on the CDN. For some reason, that never works for me. Um, I guess I'm... I guess I just don't get it. I don't know. It just never works right for me. I always end up having to download the handlebar um, JS file and then link to it um, locally. So I'm going to take that method here because that always works reliably. So I'm going to click on installation. And the big friendly orange button here says download version 4.0.5. I'll click on that. And then you can see it downloaded handlebars. And there's our handlebars JS right there. Um, actually, it looks like I have two of these for some reason. I guess I downloaded it earlier. Let's get uh, show in Finder. So here it is. And what I want to do is I want to go find my folder where I'm working, um, which I think was on the desktop here in the jQuery folder. Yeah, there's my data JS, right? So I'll drag this guy into the folder here. I'll replace my other version with it. And, uh, and there we go, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'll just copy the name here, I'll just get the whole file name. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, add another script tag here. Now remember, um, JavaScript loads, or the browser loads the page um, one element at a time. And when the element is complete, then it kind of renders it to the page or does whatever it needs to do with it. We're putting our JavaScript at the bottom of the page so that it can act on elements here that have already been loaded before the JavaScript loads, okay? So that's important. Next, when we load our JavaScript, the scripts here are going to run before the scripts down here. So the scripts higher up on the page will run first. So um, essentially, like if this script here is going to reference the variable data, which happens to be in this one, we have to load this one first. And if we're going to use handlebars in this script here, we'll have to load handlebars up here before we get into this area. So uh, let's do that here. Let's say script. And then we'll say source is handlebars.js. 
right? So that's in the same folder there, so we can link to this guy. So now there we've got handlebars. So uh, so how does this work? Well, essentially, we'll, we'll just I'll just build an example from their um, tutorial, and it'll be pretty easy, right? So let's go back here. It'll be pretty easy for you to follow. So essentially, you know, you can write an HTML block like this. Let me zoom in on that a little bit, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to use these double curly braces. These are called the handlebars. This is where it gets its name, right? You're going to use these, and inside here, imagine that this is a variable that is going to be replaced with text content, okay? And you can put these anywhere. In this, they just put it inside tags, but you could actually include the handlebars in a, in a class name or an ID name, right? Um, you could even make handlebars that write tags in there, you know? So, um, you know, you can put, put this anywhere in here. So anywhere you want to insert some data or anywhere you have some element or, you know, piece of information that might change from one block to another, then you can use the handlebars, okay? So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this block. This is our template. And then the template is not going to include, it's going to include all the boilerplate stuff, but it's not going to include some content, and that content is going to be generated by the handlebars, okay? So this is a block right here. The thing is, this block, we don't just write it as straight HTML. What we're going to do, and you can see that's what they've done here, is that they have this block, but they've placed it inside of a script tag. So this block right here is exactly the same as what we have here, but what we do is we, we wrap it in a script tag. So it's a script and then you give the script an ID, and then you set the type here to text x handlebars template. So it's important that this has the type right here. It doesn't work if it doesn't have this type, okay? Okay, so there we go. So actually, you know, as a shortcut, I'm just going to copy this script tag right here, okay? And I'll go to my, to my page here, and then I'll paste it into the page. And then let me, um, let me beautify for a moment here so it looks nice, right? And you know what I think I need to do here? I've got a lot of code going on. So I think I'm going to say templates like this. And then I'm going to put, uh, you know, JavaScript down here. And that way we kind of know that our HTML goes up above. All our templates will be in this area below the comment. And then our JavaScript goes at the bottom of the page, just inside the body tag. Okay, so, so there's our template. Now the template has an ID. Even though it's a script tag, we can still put an ID on it, and we can access that ID with our JavaScript, right? So, so this is important. So it says entry template, right? Um, these are going to be um, properties of an object. So our data objects have title, description, and background color, and ID, right? They don't have body, but they do have title. So instead of body right here, I'm going to change this to description, which is one of my um, property names here. Okay, so essentially the title right here is spelled the same as title in our template, and description now is, is, is written into the template too. So this text is going to replace what we see here, and this script or this text here will replace what we have here. Okay, so and, th and then all of this will get written into the page, right? So we're going to copy this template into here, okay? We'll, we'll copy it via JavaScript. JavaScript's going to do that for us, right? So how do we do that? we got to do one more step, okay? So what we're going to do first is we need to compile the template. So when we compile the template, essentially what we do is we, we grab this script tag, okay, via JavaScript through its ID name, and then we run it through the handlebars method, the handlebars compile method. And what it does is it returns a function that will generate this, this um, template anytime we need it, okay? And the function takes an object as, as a parameter, and when you drop the object into the function, it replaces these items with properties from your object and then returns a template populated with data from that object, okay? So that sounds like a lot for a long description there, but let's, so, so we're going to have to give it a try to see how it works, right? So let's go back to the handlebars page, and you'll see, like, this is the description of the template. Here's what the template really looks like. And then here is the process of compiling the template. And we can just borrow this code here. So I'll just copy that. And, you know, let's explain it really quick. Um, 
They're using jQuery here to select the template by its ID name. So you can see it says, you know, hashtag um, entry template, which is the ID name up here. And then we say .html. So that essentially just gets the text of this template, the HTML of it, which is all this stuff, okay? And then you say handlebars compile the source, which is the source right here was the HTML that we just got, right? So you just got the HTML, you put it in a variable source, it's just a string, and then we pass that string into uh, handlebars.compile, and then it returns template to you. Now, template is a function that takes one object as a parameter, and then the object populates the template with its properties, and then returns a string that is the populated template data, okay? So let's give it a try. So why don't we copy this? and uh, go back to our code here. And we need to compile the template before we, we use it. So I'll paste this here at the top of my script tag and make a note about compiling the template. Okay? Or maybe I should say compile the template. There we go, right? Okay, and you know, if, if you notice, you, you could actually just take all this and put it here instead if you like, right? but they're just, you know, kind of making an intermediate variable that will fill this in. Okay, so now we've got a template called template, right? We might use a more creative name when we create our project. We might have templates for different uses, right? And now, instead of using this long string here where we would have to concatenate, you know, and insert all the variables ourselves and write all the HTML, um, what we'll do is we'll replace this with template, parentheses, and actually, you know what? Um, it doesn't show me the parameters there, but we'll, we'll say template, parentheses. Remember, I told you that this is a function now. The handlebars returns a function to us, right? And it takes an object, and what we wanna do is we just wanna take data bracket P. Now, remember our, um, and then we can actually get rid of this too. We don't need that guy. So now remember, we're looping through data, which is an array and that array contains objects. So every item in data is, or in the data array is an object. And so data P is one object. So we pass that object into template. Template sees that, that the object has properties, ID, title, description, background color, right? And then it takes those properties and finds the, a place for them to put, or finds a place for them here in the handlebars, okay? So inside the double curly braces, you know, we'll see title and description. If you wanted to insert, insert ID to, you could say, you know, um, ID like this, do a double, you know, curly braces, and then put ID there. And now handlebars would find the ID property that you have in data right here and insert it into this spot right here as the ID attribute for this div tag, okay? So there we go, right? So let's save all that. And uh, hopefully we did everything right. So all we gotta do is, you know, remember the, the template here, you know, it, it takes an object and then it returns the template here, but essentially it just returns this as a string populated with the information. So we're just essentially making one big string here and then inserting that string into our tag. Okay, so let's uh, let's save that. Let's go to our page here and refresh it, and there we go. Hmm. So it looks a little different. Here's our H1. Here's the body right there, and then there's another H1 and another body and another H1 and another body. When I said body, I'm referring to the um, the code in the template here, right? Because they use the name class body, right? Um, you know, and if you wanted to include any extra HTML in here, you could maybe use a a P tag around this because you thought a P tag would be good. And, uh, you know, you could refresh that and then there we go, right? And if we want to inspect this, we can take a look and you can see that indeed this div tag got the ID from the data. And when I look in here, you can see this is just, you know, the whole template, right? The H1, the body tag, and then I just added a paragraph in there, and this is the description. So anyway, that's a quick introduction to, um, to handlebars, right? And you should try that right now. Try and uh, challenge yourself to um, set up handlebars 
um, fill in a template here. You put any markup you like here. Now remember, you can add class names if you like, and you can style those class names. You can change the class name here and here, right, to something that you like, and you can change all the markup. Everywhere you want to get data from your template, though, you're going to use the double curly bracket and then name one of the properties of the object here, okay? And so if you want to add some more properties here, then you can insert some more information here, um, you know, with the handlebars, right? So challenge yourself to do that and set up a page where all of the data from your page is coming from your data file, okay? Um, and then good luck. Thanks for watching.